Good morning. Now we are going to work on Mountain Math Set 19 today. And as we take a look at that, um, Set 19 is the set that contains 22,296 and 23,493 at the top um, for number one. Um, another way that I know that is that I can go to Mr. Tillish's fourth grade classroom, go to the classwork section, and looking at, um, not Mountain Math, but looking at my to-do list or weekly work menu, um, I can go on ahead and I can take a look at what Mountain Math we're working on this week. Um, you'll notice that with Mountain Math, I am actually spacing out these problems, not by doing one, two, and three, and four one day um, in order. Um, they are kind of sprinkled about um, because of where I, I know where you are um, with math, and I know the easy ones, I know the difficult ones, and um, I hope that I space them out for you so that like problems uh, when problem eight and 12 come around, you don't have a whole lot of um, problem solving and frustration with the problems that you'll be working prior. And in fact, 12 has its very own day. Um, so I'm looking at my uh, work menu here and I see that the week of April 14th, um, is set 19. All right, so let's get started. I am looking at number one, and number one, um, we are putting numbers in word form, expanded form, adding 100, taking away 100, and so on. Um, I would like to bring to your attention that I've already front loaded the word form of both of them as they uh, are time consuming to write them in word form. Um, same, same way that I do it in class. So let's take a look at this tiny little section here, even or odd. To determine even or odd, you're always going directly to the ones place. If that digit, six or three in this case, are even or odd, that makes the entire number even or odd. And so six is an even digit, so that makes the entire number 22,296 even. So we'll go ahead and circle that. And now I am looking at the three in the ones place of 23,493. And because three is an odd digit, I will rest comfortably knowing that this entire number is also odd. Okay. Now, um, remember that as you're going through this, if you have not completed this, um, watching this tutorial and copying me is not going to help. Um, it will help get your work, get the work done, but it will not help to create the neurons in the brain that allow your brain to build connections, new connections to content in which maybe you have had difficulty with in the past. So make sure that you're stopping this video um, to complete the steps of these problems as I go through them, or maybe you've shown up to this tutorial and you already have. Um, your Mountain Mass Set 19 complete, and you would like to use um, this as just a way to correct. All right, expanded form, you're going to write the value of each digit as you go through. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. A two in the ten thousands place is going to get us 20,000, plus a two in the thousands place is 2,000 plus a two in the hundreds place gets us 200, plus a nine in the tens place, the value is 90, and a six in the ones place is simply six, okay? Over here to 22,493, same thing, 20,000 plus 3,000 plus 400 plus 
90 plus 3. All right. Now let's add 100 to 22,296. In order to do that, you do not need to set up the traditional algorithm of adding. Rather, this is a form of mental math. Go directly to your 2 in the hundreds place and add 100 to it or add a digit to it. So adding 100 to this 2 is the same thing as taking the 2 and turning it into a 3. 22,396. Let's go ahead and stick to this column. Let's take 100 from this 2. 22,000 right, stays the same, but at taking away 100 is the same thing as uh, decreasing the 2 by 1, which is 1, making the number 22,196. Now, when we are multiplying numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000, this is another form of mental math. Here, all you need to do, the strategy, is to write down your digits, okay, minus the commas, and whenever you're multiplying by 10, you only need to add one zero to the end of this number. Then you can go in and put the commas. So one tens, hundreds, comma. When you multiply 22,296 times 10, that is 222,960. Okay, so let's take a look at 100. Again, write your digits down, right? 22,296 without the commas. You're going to be multiplying by 100. So add two zeros to the end of this number. Then go through and put your commas in the appropriate place. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma, one, um, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 comma, when you multiply 22,296 times 100, you get 2,229,600. Now let's take a look at 1,000. Again, write down your number, your original number, 22,296 minus the commas, and then multiplying by 1,000 simply means you're going to be adding three zeros to the end of this number, Add your commas appropriately. Once tens, hundreds, comma, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, comma, and you end up with 22,296,000. All right. So um, that is the left hand column there. Now let's go over to 23,000. 493. Same thing, you can almost prep yourself by writing down your number in all three spaces. Five spaces, I should say. Happy Thursday. And as I do this, I'm thinking about the mental math involved. How many zeros am I going to be taking away? How many am I going to be adding? What's going to happen when I multiply by all these zeros? and 10, 100, and 1,000, okay? All right, so 23,493 plus 100 is going to be, well, I'm going to increase this digit by 1, 23,593. Taking away 100, I am going to reduce or decrease this 4 by 1, I am going to end up with 23,393, okay? Now, when we multiply by 10, remember, you only add one zero, then place your commas, ones, tens, hundreds, comma, 234,930. When you multiply by 100, add two zeros, because there's two zeros in 100, 2,349,300, and then when you multiply by 1,000, you can simply add the three zeros, add your commas in the appropriate place, 23,493,000. Um, number one's a real workout, okay? Um, but what a great review of number sense um, number one contains.
Okay, now let's compare these numbers. Um, when comparing these numbers, you want to figure out which place value position are you going to use to compare these numbers. Okay, so let's get the numbers written down first. And in order to determine which number is largest, start with the largest place value position. And in this case, that's the 10,000th place. So you can take the twos, you have two twos in the 10,000th place. You cannot use the 10,000th place to compare these numbers. They are the same digit, makes them equal so far. Let's move over one. We have a two and we have a three sitting in the 1,000th place. Now, we can compare these two numbers using the 1,000th place because it's the first place value position that you come to where there is a different digit. Because this three is larger than this two, it makes 22,296 less than 23,493. Okay, um, you'll notice uh, I am recording uh, using a different system today. Um, so you have this nice little picture of myself here. Um, I'm going to try to take that off because I don't want it to distract you. Um, so I'm just taking a look here. Yeah, you know what? You're just going to have to live with it for right now. I don't want to mess this up. Um, so here, let's take a look at the last portion of number one. How many ones are in the tens place? Well, what do you got in the tens place? You got a nine. It's not the nine you're looking at. You're looking at the value of that nine, right? So the value of that nine is 90. So how many ones does it take? You know, you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and on and on and on and on and on until you get to 90. How many ones did you have? You had 90 ones. Make sure you're pausing this video if you are um, working with me as this tutorial is going on. That way, again, you are allowing yourself to problem solve a little bit. How many tens are in the hundreds place? Well, let's take a look here. Um, it's the two, there's a two that's in the hundreds place. The value of that two, therefore, is 200. How many tens does it take to create 200? 10 times what equals 200? 10 times 20 is 200. Therefore, there are 20 tens in the hundreds place. Let's take a look over here. How many ones are in the tens place in this number? Same thing, we had 90, right? Um, and if you have 90, how many ones does it take to make, take, uh, to make 90? That would be 90 ones. Here we have a four in the hundreds place, that is 400. What times 10? Because it's asking how many tens are in the hundreds place. How many tens do you need to make 400? 10 times what equals 400? 10 times 40 equals 400, okay? All right, that's number one. Uh, number two, we are taking a look at a number, 903,128. And we are going to be working with some of the digits, and then we are going to be working with rounding this number. So what is the value of the number 8? It should be, what is the value of the digit 8 that makes up 903,128? Well, the value of that 8, because it's in the ones place, 8 ones is simply 8. What is the value of the three in this number? The three is in the thousands place, right? So if you got a three in the thousands place and you have three thousands, well, I've just said it, it's 3,000. Okay, all right. Now we can round 903,128 to the nearest tens place. In order to do that, 
cover up the hundred thousands, ten thousands, one thousands, and even the hundred space. You are only dealing with the tens and the ones place. You're rounding to the nearest tens place. So you have 28. Now, when you're looking at 28, you got two options. You got 20, which is the value of the two, and you have the next tens place that's one up from 20, and that's 30. So is 28 closer to 30 or is it closer to 20? Now, um, as I'm thinking about it, I'm counting in my head 28, 29, 30. It's only two spaces away, two numbers away from 30. 28 is going to round to 30. Now I can go in and I can add the rest of my number. 903,130. Let's take a look at the thousands place. Cover up all your digits. Cover up that hundred thousands. Cover up that ten thousands place. And what you have here is 3,128. Now you got two options. It's either going to be, well, the value of the three, 3,000, right? Or it's going to be one up from that. It's going to be 4,000. That's that um, five or more, let it soar, four or less, let it rest kind of idea. Um, you can look at 3,128. Look at this digit to the right, right? Look at that digit in the in the um, hundreds place. That digit is definitely four or less, so this three will rest. That means that 3,128 is closer to 3,000 than it is to 4,000. So 903,000. Now, if this was 3,000, say 528, that Five would make that three soar up and saying that it's closer to 4,000 than it is to 3,000. All right, now we got the millions place. Well, let's write down our, um, well, let's take a look here. We don't even have a digit in the millions place in this number. We have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, one hundred thousands. But it's a digit that you can't see that actually does sit there, okay? It is a zero. Zero in the millions place at this point. But look to the digit to the right. I mean, we got two options. It's either going to stay a zero or it's going to boost up to one or soar up to one, meaning soar up to one million. And so I'm looking at this nine, I'm looking to the digit to the right that I'm rounding, and that nine is definitely five or more. It's, it's saying that 903,128 is closer to one million than it is to zero. So what to the millions place, we're gonna round this number to one million. There you go, that's number three. Okay, now, Let's look at prime and composite numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that have only as a factor one and itself. Composite numbers have more factors than just one and itself. It could just be one more factor than one in itself, but that still makes the digit or number composite. In this case, we're gonna be working with the number three. Always start with creating um, not a factor tree in this case. We're just listing the factor pairs, okay? So parents, if you're out there making factor trees with your kids, hey, that's fantastic for prime factorization. Um, but really our expectation in the fourth grade is to get them used to the process of listing out the factors and then determining prime or composite. And so the factor pairs for three, there's only one that comes to mind. That is one times three, because the only factor pair that exists for the number three is one times three. Three is a prime number. All right, that is one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. We're gonna turn on over to four. Four is going to be the greatest common factor. Now, we can use um, the greatest common factor for making equivalent fractions, finding equivalent fractions, 
um, the greatest common factor is a strategy that helps us to put fractions into simplest form. Okay, so you could pretend that this is actually a fraction 56 70 seconds, we would say. Um, but the first thing that we want to do when we are trying to find the greatest common factors, start by listing the factor pairs. Okay, so the factor pairs for 56, we have 1 times 56. Um, it's an even number, so I do know that 2 is definitely a factor um, because you can take 56 and divide it by 2 and divide it evenly. So 2 times something is going to get me 56. And if I sit here and I think about it, I know that 2 times 25 is 50. 2 times 26 is going to be 52. Um, 2 times 27 is going to be 54. 2 times 28 is going to be my 56. You could also look at that as 2 times 20 is 40 plus 2 times 8, which is 16, would also give me 56. Um, I am going to go to my go to factor, which is um, uh, the 8 times 7, sorry, is 56. Um, and now I'm starting to think, hmm, what else equals 56? And one of the strategies that we can do is you can talk to yourself a little bit and say, all right, I know that there's some tricky factors out there. We got three, right? We've got four. Um, five is not going to be a factor of 56 because 56 has a six in the ones place. No number that has a six in the ones place will be divisible evenly by um, five. So um, let's start with three and four. We already figured out seven and eight, so I'm feeling good about um, where I am with my factors. I am going to divide three by 56. Now I'm looking at 56 divided by three. I can do five divided by three. It's going to be a remainder, but five divided by three is going to be one. Three times one is three. 5 minus 3 is 2, bring down the 6, something, 6, uh, well, only 8, that's 24, that doesn't work. There will be a remainder, it doesn't divide evenly. Let's try 4, 56 divided by 4, 5 goes into 4 one time, 4 times 1 is 4, aha, I found 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, bring down my 6, 16 divided by 4 is 4. That divides evenly, meaning that a factor pair for 56 is 4 times 14. We can add that in. Okay. All righty. Um, so as I am looking at this list here, I'm asking myself, do I have any other numbers that may or may not be a factor of 56? Um, and I am going to rest easy here and um, be confident that I have what I need to come up with the greatest common factor, um, or at least start finding the greatest common factor of 56 and 72. So I'm going to list these out. One. Two, we found out three wasn't one, but four is, and five isn't, six isn't, seven, eight, 14, 28, and 56. So one times 56, two times 28, four times 14, and seven times eight. Let's do the same thing for 72. Again, if you're following along with this and you are um, completing Mountain Math with me, make sure that you're pausing this video before you are doing it on, um, before you are proceeding with the tutorial. All right, so 72, I have one times 72, right? 
it's an even number. So I know two times something is also going to equal 72. Let's start with something that I know. Um, well, two times 35, because 35 plus 35 is gonna be 70. So if two times 35 is 70, two times 36 is gonna get me to that 72. All right, so now let's start thinking about um, the uh, possibility that three might be a factor here, because I don't know, these aren't known facts to me. Three times 26 is not a factor that I'm comfortable with um, knowing in my daily life, and so I need to go in and figure out, or three times anything, um, for that matter, that's beyond 12, we're not practicing. So let's use long division. Does it divide evenly? 72 divided by three goes in two, gets me my six. Seven minus six is one. And bring down my two. Three, 12 divided by three is four. Three times four is 12. It does go evenly three times 24 is a factor pair of 72, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at four. Four times something gonna get me 72? Well, in order to find that out, let's do some long division. 72 divided by four, seven and four, that's one. Seven minus four is three. Bring down my two. Wow, 32 divided by four, that goes evenly. 32 divided by four is eight. Break this off, of course. And eight times four is, or four times eight is 32, all right? So four times 18 is also a factor pair of 72. Um, let's see, we've got another one. Five isn't gonna be maybe six. Let's take a look. In fact, I know six is a factor pair of 72 because five times 12 is 60, right? And then um, six times 12 is gonna be 12 more than 60, and that puts me right at 72. So I can go ahead and just plug that one in. Six times 12 is 72. Um, maybe seven, ah, oh, how about a, a known fact out there? Nine times eight is gonna be our 72, and I think we have wrapped it up. That was a big one. Let's go ahead and list these. One, two, three, four, Six, eight, nine. All right, so we got eight, nine, three, four, two, one, six, twelve, eighteen, seventy, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty-six, and seventy-two. Twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. 36 and 72. 72 is a monster when it comes to listing the factors of, um, of that number. So the greatest common factor. We listed the factors. Now we can circle the common factors. Let's take a look here. We are saying we got a one, we got a two, we got fours, we got eights, and we got fourteens, no fourteens, we got twenty-eights, no twenty-eights, fifty-six, no fifty-six. The greatest common factor are all the common factors, one, twos, four, eight. Out of all those numbers, we have eight as the greatest common factor. So what do we do? Put a square around the greatest common factor. 
if you wanted to take this fraction 56 70 seconds and put it into simplest form you would simply multiply 56 divided by 8 and 72 divided by 8 you would end up with 7 ninths that fraction is in simplest form so how many common factors did we have one two three four common factors there we go we're done but we know that when we're working with fractions that we're going to be putting them in simplest form sometimes creating equivalent fractions trying to figure out if they are equivalent um, which means that we want to get that denominator smaller than 12 so that we can use our fraction strips okay um let's go over here to greatest common factor this is a nice one this is where we just start listing out the factors okay four eight twelve right okay um, um sorry we are i'm sorry this is the least common multiple we are going to be listing the multiples of both four and three so i know i've just listed a multiple of three when i just put down that 12. so my brain's already telling me to stop what i'm doing there i am still throwing my pens i do it here too not just in the classroom that's why i always got a couple spare g2s laying around pilot g2s favorite pen of all time so i'm going to start listing these uh, multiples of three three six nine and 12 and there is that least common multiple between four and three which is 12 and i'm pretty sure i'm supposed to be oh it says least at least eight multiples sorry i don't want to cheat four eight 12 16 20 24 when i get to 32 i know i've listed eight because eight times four is 32 when I get to 24 here, I know I'm at 8 multiples because 8 times 3 is 24. 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. Still, my least common multiple is 12. Now I'm going to put a star around this least common multiple. Brutal. Star, 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 star. I don't know why they have us do that, but... I will take that challenge on. Okay, that was number five, least common multiple. Why are we using least common multiple? That goes back to number 12, all right? Number 12 in mountain math relies heavily on least common multiple. That way you can make the fractions equal if they are not, or the mixed numbers equal for that case, uh, for that matter. Um, you wanna have the denominators be the same. The least common multiple is what you use to make the denominators the same, all right? So now we got a pattern here in number six. We have a circle with four dots. We have a square with four dots, a circle with two dots, a square with two dots, and we need to complete this pattern. So here we are probably going to have a circle here. Then we're going to have a square here, right? Then we'll have a, another circle and then a square trying to stick to the pattern. Circle, square, circle, square. And then we have a circle. Now I'm noticing that in my first set, I have four dots, four dots, two dots, two dots. I am going to predict that this circle will have one dot. That square will have one dot. And then... I am going to say, uh-uh, that is not the case. That is not the pattern, all right? I need to, it is the pattern actually, because four, right, half of four is two, two, half of two is one. Then what we can do here is take a look at this circle and square. Well, if we are going to be listing half of two it could be like half of a dot um but in this case we are going to assume that there are no more dots in the circle or squares as we go through the pattern all right that's the best explanation that i have for you on that one right now 
Um, what is the pattern rule? Um, we are decreasing dots by half. Okay, what are the features of this pattern? We're talking about shapes, the features, okay? And we have the 10th and the 15th numbers and shapes in this pattern. Um, I'm going to get back to you on that one. All right, let's move on to number seven. Number seven is a sort of a word problem that um, is, let's see here, we're going to go down to Mountain Math. We're going to find set 19 underneath virtual learning math. And we can look here at number eight. Ben and Cannon, lo, um, sorry, 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 not number eight. We're looking at number seven. 27 is how many times as many as nine? 27 is how many times, right, as nine? 27 is three times as many as nine, okay? Showing an array, that would be nine rows of three, nine groups of three. And as you proceed, what am I at? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have created an array. Three seemingly equal groups of nine seemingly equal groups of three. Or you could rotate it. Let me flash back to the camera here. 27 is three times as many as nine. And then I'm showing my problem using an array. That is nine groups of three. One group of three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups of three. Okay. All righty. Let's cruise on over to number eight. Look at it, number eight. They do give you a pretty good amount of space on Mountain Math to solve number eight. Uh, ben and Cannon love to eat pie. Ben eats two thirds of a pie. Okay. So on my Mountain Math page, I am writing two thirds of a pie. And Cannon eats 12 twenty fourths. Or 12 out of 24 slices of pie. Do they eat the same amount? So I'll write same question mark, and I'll show you this on the dot camera in just one second. And um, we will need to show the fraction of pie that they eat. So show, just to remind me that I'm going to need to show by creating some sort of a picture. Okay. Now, are they the same? I don't know. How do I know? How do I not know? How do I figure it out? Well, I am going to rely on my number line, my fraction number line that I have. And I am going to look for my thirds because first is two thirds. I know that two thirds is on this chart because every fraction that is um, has a denominator that's less than 12 or 12 or smaller, okay, is probably going to be located on here, right? You have second, halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can look at my thirds. I got two thirds right here, right? Right? That's a big piece. Now, 12 24ths. I cannot find 12 24ths on this paper, right? In order to find 12 24ths on your fraction strips, you've got to put it 
into simplest form. That means that you're going to make the 24 and 12 24 as small as possible. Okay? You are going to make that as small as possible so that hopefully we can locate it in simplest form on our fraction strips. How do we put it in simplest form? That's the greatest common factor. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, no, 9, no, 10, and 12. The factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. The greatest common factor between these two fractions is going to be, well, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Put a square around the greatest common factor, just like Mountain Math does. Mountain Math is great at setting you up at um, a routine of how and what you do with numbers such as a greatest common factor or common factors, circle common factors, put a square around the greatest common factor. Great strategy. Um, great for developing muscle memory in what to do when you got to put a fraction into simplest form. So now what are we going to do with the greatest common factor? We are going to divide the numerator and denominator, 12 and 24, by 12 because it's the greatest common factor. 12 divided by 12 is 1. 12 divided by, or excuse me, 24 divided by 12 is 2. So now we just put 12 24 into simplest form and we got a denominator of 2. I know that that is on my fraction strips. I have one half. I've already, I already did this in my head because 12 24 I know it's equivalent to one half because 12 is half of 24. I know that two thirds is bigger than one half because I know two is more than half of three. If you can remember that and apply that to other fractions, it is a shortcut. So two thirds and one half, that's what we're comparing now. The goal is to get your fraction small enough so that you find them all on your fraction strips. Here's my one half, here's my two thirds. Two thirds is greater than one half. Two thirds, so same, no, right? They are not the same. Two thirds is greater than one half or 12 24ths or 8 sixteenths or 9 eighteenths, four eighths. Um, anytime you got a numerator that's half of the denominator, it's equivalent to one half. Okay? So um, show it. Well, we can show it in simplest form. We've got a pie that is loosely broken into thirds and a pie that's broken into half. We got Canon and we've got Ben. Ben and Canon. All right, all right. That is number eight. Um, so for the rest of the problems, 9, 10, 11, and 12, I will do the final mountain math review of that tomorrow. All right, guys, I hope that this new version of the video works out well for you. Let me know if you have any advice.